Hello and welcome to our budget countdown special. What the market expects from the budget is of course important. But in an on, on an ongoing basis, the market will be subject to cues from the global market, the global economy, as well as growth trends in the Indian economy and the corporate sector. The financial sector, including Reserve Bank's liquidity policy and the overall health of the financial sector are also going to be key to forecasts about markets and macros. Today I have with me two experts who cover practically all these gamuts. I have with me Nilkant Mishra, member of the Prime Minister's Economic Advisory Council, Chief Economist, Axis Bank and Chief Equity Strategist at Axis Capital. In a bit, I'm also going to be joined by Ashish Gupta, the CIO, fixed income at Axis Mutual Fund and the undoubted master of banking and financial sectors in India. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Neelkant, let me first start with you. I want to get to budget and what are the constraints and expectations. But before that, let's draw the global uh, ambience. We are getting into a slightly stronger global economy than we had expected last year, you think? After all, US numbers are still looking strong. Oh, I, I think it's exactly the opposite. So in fact, uh, what we are seeing now with, uh, with the Chinese rate cut, uh, I think the Chinese uh, economy is actually struggling. I think the sentiment there uh, seems to be, consumer sentiment there seems to be particularly bad. Uh, they're trying all possible measures to, to support growth. Uh, in the U.S., where the growth surprise uh, has been the strongest, in fact, everyone thought 2023 would be a recession year and it didn't happen. The, uh, the reason for that is significantly higher fiscal spending. In fact, uh, in the U.S., the fiscal deficit in the first three months of the year, which is October, November, December, is up by 20% year on year, nearly 1.3% of GDP. So uh, uh, when you have this level of expansion, uh, you want to see an economy which is not going into recession. Mm. So the question to ask is, when does this become unsustainable? Because uh, uh, so far, uh, and it's actually quite scary, that uh, nearly 80% of their incremental borrowing in FY23 was through T-bills, which is less than one year duration. Uh, as a stock of outstanding, notes and bonds are 75 to 80% of outstanding U.S. debt, federal debt. But in the last 12 months, in the, in the, in the, the you know, FY23, mm. it was only about uh, 19%. So oh. uh, the largest borrower in the world is borrowing... Yeah, very short. And, and they're doing it and they're getting away with it because all the surplus liquidity which was flowing out of deposits and into money market mutual funds was being sucked in by them. This cannot sustain forever. Mm -hmm. and, and I think this will mean higher inflation, supported growth, and also sustained higher interest rates uh, uh, globally. Okay. Okay, so now what does this mean for India? Uh, I mean, let me relate it to the budget itself. Going by the example of the uh, US, uh, will our fiscal deficit be very closely watched and will we be under pressure to bring it down? You know, uh, what's your number, really? No, I think that the government uh, has to stay committed to uh, the consolidation path. So they have guided to getting from 5.9% uh, to 4.5% by FY26. Uh, the only question then is, uh, can they do 70 basis points in each year, or can they do uh, 50 and then uh, maybe do 80 or 90 later on? And uh, uh, we think that a 5.3, 5.4% uh, will be the target. Uh, this is uh, this will this is required uh, to to uh, keep the, the the foreign investors and the markets in general uh, comfortable mm. about uh, India's macroeconomic stability. Okay. But, okay, 5.3 is what you're going with, you said. Yes. Okay, now if that happens, you know, if even we had a kind of fiscal stimulus, so if that, uh, you know, is less than it was, then what repercussions can there be? Will the CapEx growth be not as good uh, or the CapEx stimulus that we got from the government not be as good as it was in FY23? Let's divide it into two parts, right? So the first is that the level of fiscal deficit does not have a direct bearing on GDP growth. It is the change in fiscal deficit which has a bearing on GDP growth. So if you consolidate 
by 50 basis points, which is what we did in FY24, and I think we are likely to do better than that, uh, you, uh, you are actually already uh, creating a headwind for a GDP growth. So the 7%, 7% plus GDP growth we are seeing in FY24 is despite the fiscal consolidation that the government has undertaken. Now, if you see another 60 basis points, it's more or less the same as the uh, as the reduction that we saw in the in the previous year, and uh, therefore I think uh, incremental impact on the economy because the economy seems to have uh, a fairly strong momentum, and it should be able to withstand that. If the government was to attempt something even stronger than this, by saying that no, you'll consolidate by one percent point, then I would have expected that there could be a okay. stronger growth headwind. Uh, having said that, mm. uh, if we see that uh, the global financial markets and especially the U.S. economy gets into uh, 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 stormy waters, mm. we may have to increase our fiscal support. Uh, and therefore, uh, I think keeping some powder dry mm. is, is also uh, perhaps important. But this is a vote on account, so I don't think there will be too much nuance coming out in the election. Okay. Okay, uh, time permitting, I'll come back to uh, this uh, uh, issue of fiscal deficit, but uh, Ashish Gupta has joined us. Uh, Ashish, thank you, and sorry we started off without you. But, uh, you know, uh, you must have heard Neelkan speaking about the fiscal deficit at 5.3. For the bond markets, yeah. which you watch so closely, uh, what is the number they will be comfortable with? If that 5.3 yeah. turns out to be, say, 5.5, which some, some economists expect, then do you yeah. think it will be hell for the market or it will take it in its stride? I think uh, uh, 5.3, 5.4 uh, is probably what the market is pricing in now. Mm -hmm. I think uh, a marginal 0.1% uh, 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 swing either way is not really going to really disrupt the market in a big way. Uh, the, the fact is that uh, we also have to look at not just the demand uh, 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 side of it, but also supply, right? So uh, what is going to be uh, the appetite for bonds? And uh, we have some appetite coming in because of the bond inclusion. Uh, I think uh, the other big swing factor every year is going to be RBI's appetite. Mm. So what is the magnitude of OMO's uh, RBI does? And if... Okay. Inflation continues to be under check as has been in the last couple of months. I don't think there is any reason uh, whether uh, 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 the projected fiscal deficit is uh, 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 5.2 or 5.5. There should be any material uh, uh, negative reaction to the bond market. Okay. Uh, would you very quickly agree with that, uh, Neil Kant? That you know, 5.5. If it were to come, uh, uh, will that be all that negative? Because there is a 25 billion appetite coming. No, absolutely, and I agree with Ashish there that look, uh, you know, if your if your uh, borrowing is eleven lakh crores, I think twenty thirty thousand crores to make a song and dance about it uh, is is perhaps uh, unwarranted. Okay, well, let me come to the growth story itself. Uh, I mean, and then get the budget in. Uh, Neelkand, are you would you worry that uh, uh, growth could be under pressure? You spoke about the global head headwinds, likely rise in the cost of capital globally. Uh, how will the growth uh, picture pan out uh, and therefore what should be the nominal GDP assumption? Uh, should it be 12? Should it be 10? We would be more comfortable with more like a 10 and a half. Okay. Um, so, so that's the, uh, the number we are Going. sort of uh, running with. And uh, remember that the strength that we are seeing right now is uh, despite very tight liquidity, despite fiscal consolidation and despite a sharp slowdown in exports of goods and services, and also an elevated uh, uh, cost of capital globally and shortage of dollars, right? Effectively, mm -hmm. for the last two years, some of the marginal economies in, in say, South Asia or even Africa have actually z had zero mm -hmm. dollar bond issuance, which is finally starting to happen. Yeah. My fear is that that, that phase may not too last too long. So the headwinds, already exists. Mm. So the economy is growing at 7% plus despite those headwinds. Okay. So if those headwinds continue at the same pace, uh, I think the economy should be fine. Okay. The only risk I, I see is that because of the unsustainability of the, the, the fiscal situation in the US where, uh, uh, you know, underneath that adjustment for educational loans, 
their fiscal deficit doubled mm. from FY22 to 23. And in the first three months of this year, as we discussed, it's up another 20%. Mm. At some point, this will this will start showing up. And especially if the Republicans win the presidency, then there is a risk that this goes into a totally different tailspin. So I, I think that if those headwinds start hitting, then perhaps we see a slowdown. Okay. But without that, we should be fine. Okay. Uh, Ashish, uh, there, there are some tightness uh, or more than just tightness that the Reserve Bank has introduced uh, on unsecured loans, the higher risk weights, higher risk weights on NBFCs and its basic tight liquidity policy. Uh, how do you see all this? Is it already likely to slow credit? Uh, your overall comment? Yeah, no, I think definitely uh, there is a uh, 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 risk that if uh, this kind of uh, stance continues, on liquidity, right, uh, and uh, uh, on uh, tightening of credit. And I'm not just referring to the fact that they're looking to tighten some segments because in the overall context of things, I think that is macro prudential measure, some unsecured uh, loan segment being tightened is uh, actually more positive for longer term growth. Uh, my concern is if liquidity is kept too tight, if uh, banks are uh, uh, constrained to lower their loan deposit ratios. Uh, 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 I think uh, we don't want to lose the overall credit momentum in the economy, right? And uh, my expectation would be that as we go through the year, uh, while we uh, have uh, uh, some consolidation on the fiscal side, uh, 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 being a bit of a drag on the economy, I think monetary conditions should actually become easier uh, 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 going into the year compared to at the start of the year. Mm. And uh, that that will counterbalance uh, uh, the fiscal pullback we have. But uh, I think if, uh, uh, um, and, and you would have seen the commentary from all the banks in the last few days, uh, uh, particularly the private banks that uh, are looking to oh, actually lower the loan deposit uh, ratio, yeah. Uh, really, the only lever they have is pull back on growth because there's only so much you can do on the deposit side. Mm -hmm. Because at a systemic level, increasing rates on deposit does not necessarily mean there will be a meaningfully higher deposit growth. Right. So I think uh, we will need some more accommodative liquidity and uh, uh, credit stance uh, uh, to support this mm -hmm. uh, 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 kind of. Uh, Okay. Uh, the LGDP. I agree with you and at, at the, I, I'm going to come back to both of you on what you're expecting from the Reserve Bank and the Fed in terms of easier liquidity and financial conditions. But before that, since you have raised the topic of banks uh, and uh, they're looking for deposits, uh, Neelkanda, how do you assess this sudden stomping out of FIIs from the country? Is this all just disappointment with one bank's results or some banking results? Uh, or has this got something to do with the SEBI rule on concentrated exposure? Uh, I mean, I, we were not prepared for like over a billion dollars going out uh, two, three days in a row at a time when the U.S. is actually doing well. Yeah, so um, you see the anchoring here, uh, so there, there are stock specific issues, right? So as you rightly mentioned, I think there's disappointment with a few banks uh, in terms of what perhaps was expected in terms of guidance and strategy and what the, what the delivery has been. So there could be uh, specific funds with specific holdings in particular banks which have sold off and have taken money out instead of redeploying that uh, in other Indian stocks. But uh, at, a, at a broader level and at a macro level, remember that a lot of the inflows that happened after uh, what was seen as a very sharp Fed pivot in early December mm where the 10-year bond yields in the U.S. had fallen to 3.8%. Yes. And the expectation was that uh, now everything is, you know, let's go back to the races. And that was the phase where uh, liquidity, even for emerging markets and frontier markets, uh, seemed to start easing. Yeah, we went we to, we went to 20, 22, 22 and what, 21,000 and then 22,000 around that time, yes. Correct. So, uh, and, and this was emerging market flows, right? So, uh, uh, emerging markets saw significant rise in flows uh, because, uh, remember, if you're doing a contrarian trade in global financial markets, uh, uh, you know, if you're doing a contrarian trade, then, you know, short uh, developed, developed markets and long developing markets is the best possible trade because for 
several years, the emerging markets have been completely uh, bereft of fund flows. But uh, when this happens, of course, there was a knee-jerk reaction uh, that now the yields are falling and therefore let's uh, go back to the races. But then uh, you must have seen that uh, the 10-year bond yields are up to 4.12. That's right. Uh, people have, uh, even in the U.S., have started talking about what we have been talking about for the last six months, that the U.S. fiscal situation and the level of bond issuance is it's absolutely unsustainable. I mean, it, uh, it will start pushing up yields. Expectations on rate cuts have been moderated. And uh, so now, uh, actually, emerging markets have been seeing outflows last two weeks. So uh, while there, there are, I think, uh, stock-specific issues with some of the, uh, one of the major banks, uh, I think there are... Uh, bigger macro issues here as well, okay. which is why the FII outflows are up. Okay, I think both HDFC Bank and SEBI may be very relieved to hear this interpretation. Otherwise, a lot of blame was being pinned on these two institutions. Gentlemen, I have to take a very quick break. Back in a jiffy with lots more questions on RBI, budget and the economy.